This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. JLP MP calls for removal of PNP councillor as Portmore Deputy Mayor. The Jamaica Labour Party Member of Parliament for St. Catharines Southeastern, Robert Miller, has called on the Minister of Local Government to immediately remove People's National Party Councillor for the Edgewater Division, Alric Campbell, as the Deputy Mayor of Portmore. Miller's call comes after a video surfaced online of Campbell in an alleged face-off with residents of Morris Meadows in Portmore. In the almost two and a half minutes long video, Campbell's vehicle is seen in front of a gate that serves as an entrance to the community. People can be heard complaining that the councillor's vehicle is prohibiting residents from entering or leaving the area. In a statement, Miller said that the behavior displayed by Campbell towards the residents is unflattering and has brought the title of deputy mayor into disgrace. I am calling on the high command of the JCF, the political ombudsman, along with the Integrity Commission, to immediately investigate if there was any corrupt use of power by Mr. Campbell during the confrontation with residents, he said. The dispute was allegedly stirred over the construction of a community gate. Campbell was reportedly not thrilled with the construction taking place and tried to gain access to the community, but was prevented from doing so by a private security team, at which point he reportedly used his vehicle to block the entrance. Residents can be heard calling the act childish and unnecessary. I am also calling on the leader of the People's National Party, Mark Golding, to state his position on the matter, as clearly this cannot be the standard that he supports, Miller said. The first time Member of Parliament went on to state that he was astonished and disappointed that this was a member of a political party seeking to hold the office and formed the government. There is no room in our modern Jamaica for any such conduct to be carried out by any political representative. I want to encourage the residents of Morris Meadows to come forward and assist the JCF in its investigations, Miller added. Justice Minister wants a more timely completion of court cases. Minister of Justice Delroy Chuck, while noting improvements in the case disposal rates, said he would like to see all matters brought before the courts completed within three years. I would like to see in my lifetime that cases can be tried within a reasonable time. I hope that before long we will be able to see, from start to finish, that all matters in the courts are dealt with within three years, he said. The minister was addressing the annual Assize Church Service to mark the opening session of the Michaelmas term of the Home Circuit Court, which was broadcast virtually from the St. Andrew Parish Church on Sunday. Chuck said that while he is aware that close to 90% of cases are completed within 12 months, you do have many cases representing 10 or 15%, which could be over 1,000 cases that stretched on for too long. He commended Chief Justice Brian Sykes for issuing a strategic plan for the judiciary over the past year, of which one of the main areas of focus is the timely delivery of justice. Chief Justice, I want to thank you, all the members of the judiciary, all the stakeholders, and urge that in the coming year, let us see what impact the justice system can have on the governance of our country, he said. For his part, Justice Sykes stressed that the justice outcomes at all levels of the courts must be consistently delivered in a timely fashion at the highest standard for which we are generally known. He said that work continues reforming the country's justice system, pointing out that improvements have been made recently, largely driven by the coronavirus pandemic. Despite the pandemic, we have been holding our own, and the new efficiencies have occurred in the courts, he said. Justice Sykes noted that these improvements would not have been possible without the commitment of all judicial officers, members of staff in all the courts, and the positive responses of the legal profession to keep the courts functioning effectively despite the challenges. We continue on the journey to achieve regional and global excellence, he added. Police confirm deaths of cult pastor and a cop in car crash. Police have now confirmed that Kevin Smith, the pastor for the Pathways International Kingdom Restoration Ministries, has died. 
Smith died in a motor vehicle accident along the Bog Walk bypass in St. Catherine on Monday morning while being transported by the police. A policeman also died while two other cops were critically injured in the incident which occurred at about 9.30. What we know is that the two suspects involved in the double murder investigation in St. James were being taken to Kingston in two vehicles and being escorted by police officers. One vehicle was the pilot and the other vehicle was behind, and the vehicle that was behind, based on the account given by the pilot vehicle, there was a crashing sound, and they realized that the vehicle overturned, head of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, Corporate Communications Unit, Senior Superintendent of Police, Stephanie Lindsay, told the news. We are not sure exactly what transpired. What we know is that from the vehicle that was overturned, there were four people that were seriously injured, and the two of them succumbed to their injuries, she added. Police sources told the news that Smith was being taken to Kingston reportedly because of the behavior of police personnel at the location where he was being held in Montego Bay. The rank and the name of the deceased policeman have not been released as yet. Residents of Linstead who visited the crash scene told the news that the now deceased pastor was seen wearing a blue mask lying beside the dead policeman. They said the car transporting Smith collided with another vehicle. Smith was detained two Sundays ago after police went to his church where human sacrifices were reportedly being held. A shootout reportedly occurred between police and some churchgoers. It is reported that at least one person's throat was slashed with a knife at the church. Weakness claims a JDF soldier was Klansman gangster. A Jamaica Defense Force soldier was among the ranks of the St. Catherine-based Klansman gang, according to the main prosecution witness, now giving evidence against 33 accused members of the criminal organization now on trial. Continuing his evidence on day 13 of the affair, which has been beleaguered by adjournments, witness 2, who has been testifying since September when the trial began, identified one of the accused, Jermaine Robinson, as an army man. According to the witness, Robinson had told him that he was a soldier. He, however, admitted that he has never seen Robinson in uniform. He told the court that Robinson stood guard at his house at night while alleged gang leader Andre Blackman Bryan was there. He said during these times, Robinson had a gun in his possession. Interest groups call for urgent reopening of schools. Several organizations have issued an open letter calling for the government to urgently reopen schools to face-to-face -to -face teaching and to share plans for learning loss recovery and more resilience in the education system as COVID-19 continues. The letter is co-signed by the United Nations Children's Fund, National Parent Teachers Association of Jamaica, Jamaica Association of Principals of Secondary Schools, Jamaica Youth Advocacy Network, Jamaica Chamber of Commerce, Jamaica Manufacturers and Exporters Association, Jamaica Employers Federation, and the Business Process Industry Association of Jamaica. The group argues that Jamaica's children have lost an estimated 1.3 billion in class hours over 19 months of physical school closures. It is further being argued that the learning loss is staggering with the most vulnerable children who struggle to access remote education have been hit the hardest. The education of our children cannot be delayed anymore. As we face the biggest education crisis of our history, we must consider the cost of our inaction. That price is too high for our children to pay. The cost will continue to affect Jamaica's development prospects for generations. We have no more time to lose, the group asserted. Against that background, the organizations say the government should move to urgently have the safe reopening of schools to face-to-face -to -face teaching and to remove any barriers that stand in the way, including vaccination targets for schools. All our children, especially the most disadvantaged, deserve more focused attention and better learning opportunities than remote education can offer. This is critical for their development, safety, and well-being. Schools can be fully and safely reopened. This has been done elsewhere, and we can do it too. The group is also calling for the government to articulate effective and evidence-based strategies and implementation plans to ensure that the education system delivers a comprehensive recovery response. Effective remedial learning, psychosocial interventions, targeted and relevant social safety net provisions 
and the ongoing support for teachers to address the needs of the children should be central to these efforts the organizations charged. Further, the group wants the government to put in place the policies and the resources necessary to make the country's education system more resilient. Our education system needs to be prepared for emerging and dynamic threats, and we must work across sectors to achieve resilience. Plans for risk mitigation and disaster risk management and response must be relevant, flexible, and scalable. They also need to be adequately funded. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.